here we go. Get ready to finish up the Hennepin 100. 100 miles. It's been a great day. It's been a fun day. It's kind of hard to comprehend running 100 miles. And my pacer is running out of steam. <laughs> Come on, pacer. 24 hours, 51. It looks like it's going to be 24, 52. Thank you. In the late spring of 2019, I signed up for the Hennepin 100, a 100-mile point-to-point race from Sterling, Illinois to Kelowna. It's famously known for being flat and fast, and I can tell you, when they say flat, they mean it. This is one flat course. I've never ran 100 miles before and wasn't sure how it would turn out, but I knew I had to give it a try. There's a 30-hour cutoff, so my hope was to at least achieve that. So I laced up my running shoes and the training began. I also registered for Christmas in July, 24 hour endurance race, which would serve as a great test to see how well I could get my running of 100 miles in 24 hours. I managed to cover the 90 miles in a 24 hour time frame, which made me realize I had a genuine chance of going sub 24 and earning the coveted sub 24 buckle, the big buckle. Hennepin race day forecast had the temperatures in the upper 60s and a chance of storms. We indeed experienced about three hours worth of storms, lightning, wind, heavy rain, which turned the course into mud. It was difficult to run in and made the aid stations a big challenge. I distinctly remember struggling at one aid station while trying to change out my shoes and stocks, keep everything dry. My chair kept sinking in the mud and I was just burning too much time at these aid stations. And that left uh, me to make a... Uh, pretty uh, tough decision and when my aid station time started going from 15 minutes to 25 minutes I decided that I'm just gonna have to give up the sub 24 and just start focusing on completing this race which I did in 24 hours and 51 minutes after the 100 mile race I plan to make the year 2020 the year I go for the sub 24 buckle I knew the Hennepin 100 would be the race that I could pull this off and I would have to keep trying in order to achieve my goal. But Mother Nature had a different plan, and that was a fast spreading virus that shut down the entire world. Nearly all races across the country were canceled, and my dreams of going sub 24 was not going to happen this year. Unfortunately, during this time, I suffered from what most people did, and that was spending more time indoors, watching TV, eating food, putting on weight, and my training had halted to a minimum. My longest run for the entire year did not even exceed 15 miles. The year 2020 came and passed. Unfortunately, with longer work hours and shorter time to train, coupled to a year of light running, I knew I had to take a step back and run the 50 mile this year and go for the buck. The Hennepin 2021 race season had many participants roll over from the previous year due to COVID. By the time I decided to register, it had already reached its capacity, leaving me with only option of signing up for the 50 miler. So that year I focused on training for just the 50 mile race. However, as race day drew closer, the idea of only running 50 miles just began to bother me. I decided to reach out to Michelle, the race director of the Hennepin 100, and see if she would allow me to run the 50k night race in addition to the 50 miler. She gave me the permission to do so. During the race, the first 50 mile race went without any issues. It was the second 50k race where things started to unravel. I ended up dropping out at the Geneseo Aid Station, falling short 10 miles of the goal of completing the double race. This was the last video I took during the race. With a burning pain in every joint in my body and totally destroyed feet, I completely lost the will to continue for this race. But I have not lost my will to continue my running. I will continue to take on bigger and harder challenges, which will ultimately lead to future DNFs. But I can tell you one thing. This mule will not kick my ass again, and I'm coming for the sub-24 buckle in 22. Well, that didn't happen. I let my fear, doubt, and uncertainty take control of me. It was the fear of another failure that held me back. I hesitated and waited until it was too late, and registration had filled up and was now closed. I decided to take another run at what I call the 50-50 race and complete what I had failed at a year before, thus kicking the can down the road for another year. It was becoming apparent that running sub-24 was just a dream. 
I did, however, complete both races and in good time. I knew then I could not wait. I told myself the very second registration for the 2023 race opens up that I'm going to sign up. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to make this quest for the sub-24 buckle a reality. Well, today at 11 a.m. was my uh, official sign-up for the Hennepin 100. That's right. October 7th, I believe, is the date. And this will be my uh, second running of the Hennepin 100 miler. And 2019, I finished in 2451. This year, the plan is uh, to get under 24 hours. We'll see if I can uh, get her done. <laughs> Wish me luck, everybody. And feel free to follow me on my uh, training. I will be posting and keeping up with a lot of my training this year. And uh, hopefully we'll get her done. Under 24, going for the big buckle this year. And just like that, it was game on. I pulled no punches with my training this winter, running in rain, sleet, snow, sub-zero temperatures, making sure that sub-24 buckle was a reality. I then immediately signed up for races early on. I signed up for the Galena Sky 8-hour endurance race, the Kettle Moraine 38-mile fun run, and the Woodpecker 6-hour endurance race. I was not going to hesitate anymore. I was going to grab the bull by the horns and sign up for everything that I knew I was going to race for. Since the first two races were going to be on trails, that's where I focused my training on. I ran all the local trails. Hell, might as well make it interesting, right? And I signed up for another race. Kathy and I both ran the Frozen Gnome 10K. I finished up with an hour and 21 minutes with over 771 feet of vertical gain. This was a tough course. It was single track through Veteran Acres Park. Kathy and I had a lot of fun running this race, and this was our last race before our winter ski trip. I love skiing. It helps in improved cardio, leg strength, and overall balance. Personally, I ski because I love it, and it provides an excellent full body workout. Skiing is an exciting adrenaline rush that keeps me motivated and engaged. Skiing takes me to some of the most beautiful and scenic mountains in Colorado. I love exploring these breathtaking views while gliding down the slopes. Skiing is an excellent cross training activity for running. It helps build strength, agility, endurance, all can ultimately improve my running performance. Skiing is a perfect combination of physical activity, excitement, and natural beauty, making it the perfect winter sport for me. damage I was causing to my hip flexor during the next two segments of this video. I only realized the impact during my training season and the pain in my hip flexor and the joints after the trip which persisted throughout the entire training season and during the race. But I sure did enjoy skiing. That's right, I found Mary Jane. <laughs> oh, here we go. Time for a little double black diamond run with the shoots. Call me crazy? Yes, I'm crazy. <laughs> I gotta do it. I did uh, Jeff's, uh, oh, I did that one about five years ago. So I'm gonna re revisit an old friend. And as you can see, these runs 
are straight down. 50, I think around 50 degree, uh, 55. So I'm gonna try to make my way over to Jeff's and uh, go from there. Well, I tell you, not get your heart pumping more than this. Oh my God. halfway down and uh, get close to the bottom but that's looking up that's like straight up I just come down from way up there <laughs> shred some gnar <laughs> oh yeah yeah I gotta get down there through the trees now <laughs> Good morning everybody to today's dog jog running vlog. Hey everybody, well today uh, kind of a little bad news. Seem to be suffering minor setback. Not what I wanted to be talking about in my second week of training for the Hennepin 100. But best to describe it is possibly a hip flexor tendonitis. Seems to be flaring up. Uh, I noticed it uh, on my 10 mile run right after we got back from uh, Colorado. Hammering all them moguls and trees. Might not have overdone it on the uh, ski trip. So I'm going to have to take a little bit of a cut back here. My uh, new plan is going to be next two weeks, including this week and the next week, uh, going to be a uh, 15 mile under 20 mile run weeks focusing more on uh, stretches we'll see how that works out <laughs> so hopefully uh we have some good news after all that isn't that right barkley i'll just have to take barkley on a couple shorter jogs that's all <laughs> all right everybody good luck and happy training and just like that i created a new warm-up and stretching routine oh I had a little help from my furry friends. everybody to another edition of jog vlog with running dogs <laughs> all right everybody well today barkley luna and i we're gonna go for a little 10k run i'm gonna test out that hip flexor see how it's gonna do here and uh so far not too bad i'm experiencing minimal uh discomfort with it so uh the plan is this week i'm gonna step up the mileage just a little bit uh try to push through about 20 miles for the week and uh keep an eye on it see how it's doing and uh if i need to throttle back i uh, unfortunately will have to throttle back <laughs> oh i hate a setback like this right at the beginning of the training but that's just how this sport goes sometimes what do you say barkley 
You guys ready for a little interval here? <laughs> All right, happy training everybody. Over the next few weeks, the conditions with my hip flexor slowly improved, which allowed me to increase my mileage to 50 miles a week before having to taper down for the Galena Sky 8 hour endurance race. This race was critical because it was going to set me up for the Kettle Moraine 38 mile fun run one month later. Good morning everybody. Today Barkley and I are doing a little taper run. We got the Galena Sky 8 hour endurance race on Saturday, which is two days away. What do you say Barkley? You ready to go run that? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, they don't let Barkley on that race. Sorry, buddy. You'll have to stay home for that one. Welcome to Chestnut Mountain Resort. Today, we're not here to ski. Nope. We're here to run the Galena Sky 8-hour endurance race on a ski area. This is going to be crazy. We're going to run uh, up and down these hills for the next 8 hours. Uh, the course is actually just outside the ski slopes. Uh, it does run across... Uh, a couple parts of the slope, but uh, mainly we're going to stay on the north end. Or actually, this would be the east end of the uh, ski area. But uh, this is going to be beautiful. It's right now 48 degrees. The forecasted high is going to be 68, 69. Uh, big change from last year. Last year got up to 90 degrees. It was pretty hot out here uh, last year in the afternoon hours. But right now it is beautiful. It is cool. We have a sunny bluebird day. It just doesn't really get any better than this. This is gonna be incredible, absolutely incredible. And uh, <laughs> yeah, at a ski place. This is so awesome, absolutely awesome. <laughs> Sky race went really well. I ran this race with my wife Kathy and two friends Travis and Anthony. The weather was really nice, about 48 degrees at the start, with the temperature slowly rising in the lower 70s, which made it comfortable running weather. I completed the race with 35.6 miles and 3,500 vertical feet of gain, with virtually no pain. It looked like my new warm up and stretching routine was finally paying off. <music> After the Galena Sky Race, I jumped right back into my training. Did not take any recovery time, and I was pushing anywhere between 60 and 80 miles a week. However, sometimes the weather just doesn't cooperate. Well, today's uh, turning out to be an interesting run. Uh, we got a tornado warning, and there's a tornado somewhere in those clouds, and I'm heading that direction. <laughs> so, Kathy, she's... Uh, on her way out to rescue me and uh i'm gonna run as long as the weather's good but if it starts to get really crazy i'm gonna duck for cover i got some ditches around here coverts something and uh yep there she is right there there's my rescue i don't know if they're here to rescue me or if they're uh wanting to see this tornado <laughs> and it's starting to rain so it's gonna get interesting. Well, the storm's hit me. Uh, I got a plastic bag over my phone, so that's why the visual, the video is gonna be pretty crappy. But uh, I suppose there's a tornado out there somewhere. <laughs> and it's only a couple miles from here. I don't see it. And uh, as long as I don't hit any hail, I'm gonna run out the rest of this run. But if the hail starts, I'm going to jump right in the van here so I get my rescue. Always got to have an out. Oh, there's some lightning. <laughs> this is what makes ultra running fun. Man, it's blowing like crazy. Oh, man. That's a crazy storm. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody. Well, today's run doing some vertical running today that's right going up and down the bluffs so far i'm about uh, nine miles in 
my run today and uh, over a thousand vertical feet. That's a lot for this water. And this is some of the views I get when I'm up here on the bluffs. Uh, that's the Mississippi River there and the river bridge. Absolutely beautiful out here. And uh, it uh, can get uh, quite challenging. This morning it's been really cool and we take advantage of this cool weather uh, with uh, running up and down these hills. <laughs> Woo! I'll probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 1,200 vertical feet when I get done with the run today. Uh, yeah, these, these hills just go on and on. <laughs> it's about all we get out here in uh, flat Iowa. You get out by the bluffs, it's, uh, you can get some good hill training out here. Not too bad. Now, uh, this uh, week I'm gonna be tapering down after this run. I tapered my running down over the next week in preparation for the Kettle Moraine 38 mile fun run that takes place on the Ice Age Trail in Wisconsin. It starts off nice, easy, rolling, double track uh, running through the uh, majestic forest there ending at Rice Lake before turning around. About halfway through the process, you end up getting onto a very technical single track trail, which is very difficult. Kettle Moraine race on the Ice Age Trail with all its beauty and glory should not be underestimated. This is one tough and technical race, especially for this flatlander. This race marks the beginning of a series of setbacks for me. I lost track of my hydration, which resulted in severe muscle cramps toward the end of the race. At one point, my left quad almost completely locked up. I must have tripped over a dozen times, which resulted in severe whiplash to my neck. After the race, I was forced to reduce my training to nearly nothing for the next two weeks. It also aggravated a lingering hip flexor issue that I thought was resolved. With two weeks of training loss, an additional week planned for a trip to celebrate my father's birthday, it would be a total of three weeks setback in my training. That kind of hurdle I hope to avoid in my training. But let me tell you, man, I sure enjoyed this race. After two rough weeks of recovery, we packed our bags, went to Florida to celebrate my father's birthday, and to run the jungle. Yeah, this was definitely one of the craziest things I've ever done. I was so worried about alligators and snakes, I ended up with a big old leech on my ankle. That day, I managed to run six miles through that alligator and snake infested jungle and somehow I managed to survive. After we returned from Florida, I dramatically increased my running from 40 to 60 miles a week for the next two weeks, after which I ramped it up from 60 all the way up to 100 mile run weeks. I then focused all my training runs out on the country gravel roads. Not only did I find a sense of comfort out in the country, but I also found some friends. Better do a little running with the cows. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Go for a little run, huh? 
Let's go for a run. <laughs> They're following me. There they are. Up, <laughs> oh, you got a fence. You're not going to be able to follow me today, guys. During the following two months, my training mileage fluctuated between 70 and 115 miles per week, resulting in a total of 650 miles covered in that brief period. This was particularly challenging given that I had an unpredictable on-the-call job working 100, sometimes 120 hours per week alongside coping with scorching weather and unexpected thunderstorms. <music> Let's see, just about to finish up 20 miles in the hotel treadmill here. Got yeah, about another tenth of a mile to go. That'll be another 20 in the books for the week. We told 91 miles this week, and uh, still got two more days to go. We'll see how many more we can go. Might get over 100. <laughs> Okay, getting ready to finish up this oven run because that's what it feels like out here in an oven. Just check the weather. It is 95 degrees. Heat index is 106. Yikes! This is a hot one. <laughs> I got about a quarter mile and then my rescue vehicle is waiting for me. Alright, there it is. That's the rescue vehicle. Yeehaw! I made it. And there's an attack dog trying to get me. <laughs> oh yeah, looks like a good morning for a 20 mile run. Hopefully the lightning won't get me. Up oh, there's some right there. It's gonna storm just as I start my run. This can be a lot of fun today. Yep, a little bit of a rain delay going on here. It's raining pretty hard out there. Alright, there's the windmill. <laughs> Yeah, decided to wait it out the last second. I was getting ready to head out the door, and the lightning really started picking up. Kathy got real nervous, talked to me into uh, staying inside, waiting until the storm ended. So I did. <laughs> so now uh, it's uh, very humid, very muggy out. Once these clouds go away, it's going to get hot fast. Forecast high 87 degrees. So, it's going to be a steamy morning. All right. I'm about two and a half miles in on my uh, second uh, 20, doing back-to-back -back 20s. And wanted to get out before the uh, sun uh, rose. And now I'm getting chased by a pretty good thunderstorm. It's starting to rain pretty good now. <laughs> it... Uh, Nice cool weather today. I think it's I think it's about 70 degrees. Not too bad. But I'm gonna get uh I'm gonna get dumped on here pretty soon. Because the lightning's starting to pick up too. That's about the only thing I'm really worried about. Whoa man! This big old bolt of lightning. Holy shit. I got nowhere to really hide right now. That was intense and that was close. So bright it blinded me for a second. I don't know where it hit, but it was damn close. I have no idea where to take cover. There's just nowhere right now. I keep running. There's a creek and a, a, a drainage a, a tunnel down in there. I can hide in there, but here there, go bang on one of them houses doors. <laughs> wow that lightning was close man that's all coming towards me trying to outrun the storm <laughs> Woo! man that gets the old heart pumping wow 
There she goes. <laughs> She's gonna meet me at that railroad top or that uh, radio tower up there. <laughs> this traveling aid station right here. Last 20 miles before he runs 100. Like a really hey, hey, goofy hey. gazelle in the Serengeti. Woo. See you there, guys. <laughs> 752. 752. All right. All right. There you go. That's it. It wasn't a heavy rainfall, but it was a lot of rain. It right. puddled and pooled up everywhere to the point where. Four minutes. I gave up on. All right, well, every, yeah, I was going to say everything looks good. We're going to keep uh, with the original plan. To uh, Cat City. Kitty, kitty. Meow. kitty City. I got a kitty cat running with me today. She's going for a 20 miler. Come on, kitty. Come on, kitty. You can do it. You can do it, kitty. There we go. Fat Annie's. And there's Kathy with some uh, much needed ice cold water oh yeah i am craving some cold water ah, there's the old chair there's a clown This was my last 20 mile training run out on the country roads. I knew I was going to get called into work immediately after finishing this run. So I figured I'd end up working most of the night getting about 4-5 to five hours of sleep at the hotel. Then after waking up hopefully having enough time to run 10 miles on a hotel treadmill before I get called into work. After that I was going to start my 2 weeks taper before the Hennepin 100 race. But my wife had a surprise waiting for me when I got finished running on the treadmill at the hotel. All right, so interesting uh, story here. Yesterday, got up about 10 in the morning. Was at the hotel at her way from home terminal, doing uh, 10 miles on the treadmill. My wife was up here in the Quad Cities, getting ready for the uh, Quad Cities race, packet pickup, whole nine yards. And she calls me up, and she's like, "Want me to sign you up for the marathon?" Ah, didn't know if I'd be home in time. I'm gonna have to work all night, plus getting off that treadmill 10 miles. I'm like, I don't know. And I decided, let's go for it. So we signed up. It was all night working. <laughs> Managed to get the slight catnap in the car on the way up here. Now I'm gonna run 26.2 miles. And uh, this is gonna be good. Good for race day for Hennepin. But like, uh, Staying up all night <laughs> and running. running the Quad Cities Marathon. I couldn't say how many ultras I've run, but I can tell you I've only run four road marathons. The weather for this was nice, cool, which made it the perfect running weather for a marathon. My race plan was pretty simple. I was going to utilize my Hennepin 100 strategy, run the first six miles continuous, after which I will switch over to a three by two, that's a three minute run, two minute walk, and by utilizing this strategy it made for the easiest marathon I've ever ran. I finished in 4 hours and 46 minutes. Alright, now we're running over the top of the new bridge. That's a nice bridge. The old one used to wobble. You can feel it. 
oscillating up and down and the runners around that bridge. Kind of creepy. safe to say after running the Quad Cities Marathon I'm ready to run 100 miles. The only thing I have now left to look forward to is the two weeks taper leading into the race. Exactly 24 hours for the starting of the Hennepin 100 and it is cold and breezy out I'm not sure what the temperature is I think it's like 45 degrees 50 degrees it's gonna be colder tomorrow high is gonna be 60 it's gonna be perfect running weather you want to go run 100 miles with me buddy huh from this point on all I had left was just a few things to do First thing, time to carve load. That's right. My plan was to eat a big bowl of spaghetti. And when I say a big bowl, I mean a huge bowl. I like to eat about 12 hours before I plan to get up before the race starts. That allows my body ample time to process the food so I don't have any bathroom issues during the race. The second thing, all that gear, I got to pack up all that gear, put it in the van, and I'll hopefully have enough room for uh, everybody uh, to sit in the van before we drive two hours to Kelowna to the uh, packet pickup and attend the safety meeting. After that, it's going to be time to go to the hotel and try, and I mean try, to get some sleep. It was going to be a rough night. Hopefully, I get some good sleep before the race. Good morning, everybody. Today, we are heading to the starting line of the Hennepin 100. It's about 40, well, now it says 43 degrees out. It's going to be a, a very chilly start. Uh, I know a lot of runners uh, were expecting warmer temperatures for this race, so was I. Last weekend it was, I believe, 91 degrees out, so it's a big change in just a week's time. Go from 91 to 43. Turn right onto East 13th Street. I normally prefer the cold weather, just like to be a little more prepared for it. But I think things are going to work out today. Start of the uh, starting line here, the Hennepin 100. It's going to start in about 45 minutes. It is still pretty dark out and it's about to get real. Mind your time at the aid station. I will see you in 15 miles. I love you. 30 seconds to the start. Come on. 30 seconds. Have fun. <laughs>
right, today, get up in 100 day. Yep, let's go run 100 miles. <laughs> See if we can get her done this year. Right now we're crossing the beautiful Rock River. It is nice sunrise morning. It's about 44 degrees out and temperatures is expected to get about 60 degrees. Should be the uh, perfect temperature for running this thing today. Uh, only concerns overnight hours tonight. Uh, gonna get down into possibly the uh, 30s. So we'll see how that works out. Might have to throw on a, a layer or something at some point during the race. But uh, definitely a big change from the past couple years being warmer. Two years ago it got up into the uh, mid to upper 80s. That was brutal. That was a tough year. This year uh, quite the opposite so we'll see how everything works out. Stretching and delayering in. Four, five, six, seven. All right. So far, four minutes down at this aid station. I gotta stay under 10 minutes at each aid station. So I'm gonna grab some goodies and get out of here. Okay, we'll do one of these. Where's the gnarly? This one? Yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, four. In at 7.54, out at 7.59. You go, Thank you. All right, just leaving aid station number one. Five minutes. So five minutes ahead on the station stop. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, a little cool the D layer, but it was just a little too warm with that layer on. So I'll be all right. Don't want to sweat too much too early. Well, I lost my granola bar. <laughs> Put it in my vest. Figure eh, about halfway between eight stations. That'll go down good. Eh, it's gone. I don't know where it went. Crawled out of my vest somehow. <laughs> oh well. I did have a couple of Oreo cookies. So, so I think I'll survive to the next eight station. <laughs> Pulled my uh, layer off and wasn't sure if it was uh, warm enough without it, but I made that decision and I feel real comfortable right now. So everything's uh, feeling good so far. And uh, just real early in the race, 6.37 miles. So we got a long way to go. Very beautiful morning, look at this. What time am I in here? Nine o'clock in. How you doing? Let's top this off. And uh, oh boy, here we go. Don't forget your shot. It's shot time. I'm a chicken. I'll go for the pickle juice. I uh, I hit that hard stuff. It's gonna be sleepy time. I'm my best 50 miler here. I took all three. Not not running. I do. Good morning. Well, I'd be glad to say I don't need that. 
and I definitely don't need that yet. But do you want <laughs> it? No, 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 no. That, that put me to bed. I will do a shot of pickle juice there. There we go. I will definitely do a shot of pickle juice. Here we go. Pickle juice shots. Yeah, here. Mm. Yeah, a little bitter. Yeah, this is pickle juice. That's a little bitter. Oh, going for the shots. Here we go. This is pickle juice, though, right? <laughs> oh, is that pickle juice? Yeah, I'm not doing Oh, okay. That. I'll do that later. I thought you grabbed one of the shots there. That's gnarly. Yeah. Yep. And oh, yeah. I got to get... Um, Water. Okay. We're, uh, cup. Let me get a cup for the gnarly. Oh, yeah. Oh, gnarly water here. Oh, sorry. All right. Oh, oh man. Hey, what are you, doing you guys here? knew I was going to be here. Gnarly. Got the fruit pies and everything. Oh, Let's yeah. grab a sandwich. When I used to run marathons, I used to keep vodka in my jar. Uh, yep. Oh, I had Oh, Yeti, Yeti trail runners. You got that one year at This is the munchies here. The cookie sandwich. No, no, I'm good. Granola. I'm good. A little break here. Don't have my chair. Oh, get out of Chris's uh, view there. Yeah, let's get out of here. Okay. 9.04. Four minutes. In and out four minutes. So doing good. Now, last year I forgot to fill my water bottle. <laughs> Not this year. Don't want to have to drink out of the canal. First crew day station. Goofball will be running through here sometime here soon. There's a big snake on the trail back there. I don't know who his victim is going to be. He wasn't moving. He either already <laughs> ate or he's dead, but he was big. <laughs> Snakes got him. Okay. You know they say, no step on snake. Yep. Big old snake back there. <laughs> he was a big boy. Had to get away from him. I'm only gonna hang around and try to film that big old ugly thing. Don't know what he was. He's a big boy. <laughs> oh, the uh, aid station snuck up on me. We're coming into aid station number three. And number three aid station is the first aid station. The runners are allowed to have their crew members meet them. So it's usually a pretty busy aid station here. And we'll see where my crew is uh, hiding out. Excellent. How you doing? <laughs> I made it this far. Oh, well. All right. Thank you guys. Job, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All the goodies here. Okay. It is 9:53. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Here's all the goodies. Give okay. me some gnarly water here. Some gnarly? That's right. right. Give me some of that gnarly. Up or you want a cup of I'll just grab me a cup of that. There you go. Thank you, sir. You betcha. No problem. Oh, no. It's just a chip, yeah. watermelon. Okay. Trash. Over here. Slice of watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh, where we set up at? Right over there. Right behind you. Yeah. Mm. All right. You didn't tell us what shoes you wanted, so I just brought the blue ones. That's fine. Um, we get this stuff. Also, uh, you need to start hooking them up. Yep. Nine fifty four. Nine fifty four. Well. It was 53. When I came in there, um, let's see. Get this stuff uh, going. We don't want this going dead later. Get the. I uh, need to press on it, make sure it's cured. Yeah, crap. It was good. And we practice all this, but. That's charging. Are we charging? We're charging, charging right now. Okay. All right, so. Uh, shoes. 
uh, we need some Tylenol, we need some uh, two uh, chewables, sodium. Uh, hip flexors on both sides for flare it up. So, uh, right here, this muscle, we start and then the, the hip flexors. Scale one to ten on the hip, fle uh, hip flexors, about a two. It's noticeable, so let's uh, hope that it just stays that way. Uh, about eight minutes. Eight minutes. All right. Did you get the letter? This is going to get more and more difficult Love here. You. Bye. The shoes. Bye. shoes and socks. So, uh, How are you holding up so far? Uh, other than uh, the hip flexors, uh, yeah, everything's doing good. So, uh, I've noticed my pacing's a little, a little slow today for some reason. And, uh, are you talking a lot? Yeah. A lot of a lot of fans of my channel. I watch my videos. I can't believe how many people are here. Subscribe! <laughs> now, I'm um, gonna yeah, show you. I'm just waiting for you to be able to take it from me. Uh, one more. We're gonna do two. So there's muscle and shooting. I didn't take the one at the start. Nothing like eating shark. You just take the fireball. Right? No, the fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I chickened out. I did the pickle shots. You know what? I'm going to walk. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this they feel nice and cool. Time? Got seven, almost six. Okay. I got, I'm plus on five on the first aid station, plus six on the second aid station. So, I've got a total of uh, 10 minutes credit. As in you're ahead or in the hole? Ahead, ahead credit. Nice. All right, Not six minutes. Six, six minutes. Okay. Um, oh, crap. Clean out my trash here. Ugh. Make sure it's all trash. Uh, yeah. You have a wipe. Take yep. my hands off here. Oh. Where are they? I don't know. You said you packed those. Yeah, wipes. Oh. You said for your glasses. No. No, no, not those wipes. They said for my hands. Or did I say glasses? It sounded like you said your no. glasses. No, no. Take my hands off. For... Your brain's already falling apart. <laughs> it don't take much. We're talking about 90 miles in. I'll be blah, 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 blah. Is the other bottle good? Yes. Matter of fact. 90 miles in, you'll be talking to a palm oh. tree. Here. I do not need this. Or is that 80 miles in? H have that, dry that off somehow in the van, spread it out, whatever you gotta do. Because I will need it later on tonight. Um, Five minutes. I want um, two, goo, two goos and two. Um, what should we call it? Gel or liquids. You so. got this. Okay. <laughs> Hearing everyone's timers going off. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like the cicadas out there. It was just beep 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 beep. No, oh, yeah, people getting all fucked up. Fucking timers going off. People are just walking and running, and it's like a Pavlovian responses here, beeping. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, you change up. It's like, wait a minute, that's not mine. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? Good. Time. I got shorts, but I'm Approaching four minutes. To go? But four minutes. To go? Four minutes to go. I didn't lose my uh, granola bar. It was in my pocket. <laughs> All right, love you. All right, goodbye. You. Don't expose your kid to failure. <laughs> Jeez. You're something else. See you guys. Good job, man. Thank you. Hey, enjoy your videos. <laughs> oh, thank you. Just leaving each station number three and got uh, resupplied and uh, resupplied, refreshed, and uh, did a shoe. Uh, Shoe change. It's like a, a NASCAR pit stop.
fresh fuel and tires. <laughs> Got some new tires on. Good morning, everybody. This is a Hennepin race report. Welcome to the Hennepin Canal. Look at this beauty today. Right now I'm uh, 15 and a half miles in the race. Everything's doing good. Uh, the weather just could not be any better. Absolutely could not be better. I don't know what the temperature is. It is nice. It is cool. Probably in the low 50s. And uh, we have a slight breeze. I'm kind of surprised because usually this canal uh, blocks a lot of the wind. I can feel a little bit of a breeze, which is really, really good. And we'll see what happens here. <laughs> but this place is beautiful. Check this out. Look at this. Ain't that amazing? <laughs> I'll try to keep everybody up to date. We'll do a couple more uh, race reports. Everybody out here, good spirits. Everyone looks strong, healthy, and running good. Sticking to the run plans. All right, good luck, everybody. Coming into aid station number four, Fleet Feet. Yeah. All right, where's Nari? Nah, right. over here. Uh, There's cups here. This cup here. Yeah. 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 Right. That's a good one. Cups here. Amazing. Thank you very much. Right, I got my potatoes. All right. My nutritional plan is pretty simple. I like to eat small amounts very often. Usually at the aid station, I'm looking for something with a lot of starch. A little small sandwich, granola, potatoes. Mashed with potatoes. Love mashed potatoes. And I'm also looking for something with a lot of sugar. Cookie, M&Ms, peanut butter uh, cups. Uh, really good. A lot of sugar. So a little bit of sugar and a little bit of starch. My strategy is sugar is going to get you going within the next couple of minutes. And then when the uh, sugar runs out, then the starches and everything's going to kick in. It's going to give you some energy about 30, 40 minutes down the road. And by the time that wears out, it should be at the next date station. All right, we're coming into aid station number five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing? Okay. You'll see it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you will. I'm 43. Hi, right. where's Gnarly? Right there. Hi. Right. I got Ascap. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. That's all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm going to get your. Thanks, guys. Yeah. There's Dad. And gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. We got Cookies. Um, watermelon, peanut butter, and jelly. Turkey. Okay. Let me have one peanut butter and jelly. A couple of cookies there. Oh yeah, I understand. I understand. Oh, we got some critters here. Where we set up at? Right down there. Down here. All right. It's on that toe. The toe that's closest to it. Did he note the time when he got there? Yeah. 33. Here's your. As long as this hip flexor doesn't get any worse. Um, starting to, uh, you know, it, it's a little, you know, it's the, the, it hurts, but it's also starting to get tight. Um, 12.38 average, I'm still on par. Alright, we'll see you but in this, nine miles uh, then. This hip flexor area is getting tight, so... I hope I don't have to start making dra dramatic changes. So it's got me concerned. So. All right, time's up. All right, guys, see ya. Is that what it is, nine? Until I see you guys, right?
station. Nine until I see you guys. What's the next aid station? Four? I think it's like four. Yeah, okay. 4.2. Right there. All right, leaving aid station number five. I've been refueled, retreaded. I'm a third pair of shoes here. Changing a lot of shoes up this year. And uh, we're gonna see uh, how my feet handle that. New strategy this year. See what happens. Which one's gnarly? Right, about three quarters of the way up. Yeah. Thank you. There. Oreos. I also have bread with cinnamon butter. No. I got bean roll pops. I'm gonna pass on that. All right, just leaving aid station number six. Four. 0.8 miles in and got there at 43 it is now 46 so yeah I figure I'll just walk the next two minutes and uh, instead of standing there eating I'm gonna eat on the walk here got me a couple of granola or no granola bar and a couple of cookies that ought to do it 4.8 miles to 8 station 7 that's a big kind of a big aid station and uh, that's where we will turn around head back out the way we came for about I think it's a half mile maybe three quarters of a mile across the canal and then head on the uh, out and back segment and uh, I'll eventually come back to that aid station uh, it'll be later on in the evening on the way back it will be the called the uh, a station 15 and then uh eight station 16 the pineapple those guys are great and uh i'm gonna pick up my pacer at that eight station there my buddy anthony he's gonna run uh the last uh segment of the course it's 20 I think it's like 27, 26 and a half, 27, about 27 miles. So he'll get a marathon in. He just ran another race earlier uh, this morning. So he's <laughs> he's got a busy day going on. And my buddy Travis, he's running the uh, nighttime 50K here. And when he gets done, he's going to you know come find where I'm at. And he's going to pace me as well. So it'll be a good time. I gotta get to that point first. <laughs> gotta get to that point. Still a long way to go. A lot of race left. A lot of time left. Um, I'm about 40 minutes ahead of schedule. I do need to slow down just a little bit. Not much, just a, a little bit. Uh, I wanna keep this uh, extra window of comfort room. Uh, if I can keep that, th at least keep a 30 minute window is my plan there. And uh, that'll give me just enough comfort. I don't wanna feel stressed towards the end. I don't want this coming down to a 23.59 finish. If it happens, it happens. Uh, definitely do not want a uh, 24.01 finish. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm glad I got a little bit of a, a little bit of a extra room here. Uh, in past races, my feet start falling apart, and you got to take time to pop the blisters, lube the toes, and all that just burns time off the clock. 
So I got a feeling that window is going to get eaten up uh, real fast. Real fast. 24, 25. Okay, yeah, I better start running here. I fire the timer back up here. Get her going. All right. Back to uh, three and two intervals. And uh, uh, now I get to eat this on the run. <laughs> Instead of, I'll, I'll wait till my walking interval. Then I'll eat this. I'll hold on to this for another three minutes. <laughs> Sit here uh, vlogging when I should be eating. <laughs> but hey, look at this. I don't know what the temperature is. It's It might have hit 60 today. I don't know. Last year it was mid 70s. Year before it was mid 80s. Get up like 86. In this part of the race, I felt like I was being just baked on by the sun. Uh, today, nice cool breeze. It just, wow. But it just could not be a better day. Just could not be, the weather could not be better for this. I imagine uh, course records out here are gonna, might be set today. We'll see what happens. Wouldn't that be surprised if uh, there's all new uh, course records in all the categories. So we'll see how that uh, plays out later. Until then. Race report number two. Right now, I'm currently 50k into the race. That's 31 miles, and my elapsed time is six hours and 30 minutes. I'm still a little bit ahead of schedule. Kind of slow it down a little bit here. Yeah. Come to aid station number seven here, and less than uh, less than a mile. The weather has been just absolutely beautiful. I'm still blown away by the. The luck we have for the weather today. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the course today. Nice, partly sunny, little cloud cover. I don't know what the temperature is. We're gonna say 60 degrees. That's what it feels like. And have a nice breeze. Up here, uh, yeah, what they call Confusion Corner. I'm gonna run into the aid station in about a half mile. Turn around, come back across this bridge right here on the other side and I start the small out and back segment. When I come back through here the second time, it'll be late. Probably looking around midnight. It'll be dark. <laughs> so everything's doing good so far. A little bit of hip flexor issues that kind of come and go. And just keeping an eye on that. Hopefully that won't uh, developing anything more than it already is hoping and praying <laughs> so all right i'll probably check back in with you guys i don't know we'll say 50 mile mark thank you thank you thank you Everybody. Thank you. Go slow, bear. Get credit for this one, right? <laughs> What's up? Are we, are we set up there. Hi. Right. Let me go attack the station here. Big old cup of gnarly. Can I get a cup? Big old gnarly water here. How you holding up? So far so good. Uh, good. The hip flexor, it's been coming and going, which is a good sign because it's giving me some relief. So it also gives me hope that maybe it's not going to get real bad, but mm. only time's going to tell on that. So, um, I was 25 miles in, I was um, about 40 minutes ahead. Mm. So I got to slow my roll just a little bit, 
uh, if I can keep the 30 minute uh, buffer uh, throughout the race, that's, that's great. I don't want to go more than that. I do not want to push myself. It's uh, sub 24, not sub 23. So you're at a 40 minute buffer right now? Close. All right, just leaving aid station number seven. Gonna start the out and back segment. Oh man, this is the fun part here. This is Confusion Corner. Your first time through, you come up from the east here, and you're gonna run. You're gonna run west, Aid Station Seven over there. Okay. And you turn around at Aid Station Seven. You come back, and then you turn on this road here, and cross the canal. And that's how you navigate Confusion Corner. And now we're on the south side of the canal here. And we're going to be over here for a little while. <laughs> Past the uh, 
50 mile mark. Elapsed time, 11 hours, five minutes. That gives me 55 minutes of wiggle room. I'm uh, just 55 minutes ahead here, not doing too bad. Uh, it's uh, hit the uh, turnaround. And now we gotta run uh, all the way to Kelowna. There's a little tunnel here. Watch my step in here, it's pretty bad. Okay. How you doing, man? Good job. How are you? Doing good. All right. Uh, so, 55 minutes ahead of schedule. And uh, might need uh, might need that wiggle room second half. We'll see what happens. Seems like uh, things go wrong. It's it's when they go wrong. It's always that second half. And we got a beautiful sunrise here. I mean, sunset. <laughs> I'm already getting delirious. There we go. That sun's gonna go down here in a few minutes and the temperature is gonna drop fast, real fast. Forecast in, I think it was 40 for overnight. So we'll see how that works out. All right, check back in. Oh, giving her 25 miles or so. So about 75 miles in. And then I should have, uh, pick up one of my pacers he's waiting for me at the pineapple aid station that's about mile 73 see y'all there all right sun has set it's dark out here in the trail all right fire up the old kigalas oh yeah <laughs> i can see now all right, got some good news here. Right there, 100K. Uh, it just hit the 100K mark, 62 miles, 13.58. My uh, previous uh, 100K uh, time was uh, 14.04. So, six minutes. I beat my 100K time by six minutes. Well, this has definitely been one interesting day so far. After setting my 50 mile all time personal record, I now just set another one for the 100K mark. I'm also about 45 minutes ahead of my pace time with only 38 miles left to go. Anything can happen from severe blistering to the hip flexor flaring up worse than it already is or simply by just hitting the wall. But for now, everything was looking good. Legs are strong. I seem to have endless amounts of energy. This is the part of the race where my railroad job becomes an asset. I had become accustomed to running in extreme fatigue conditions because it was the only way to get my training runs in. I had somewhat gotten used to running my long runs after being up for as long as 20 plus hours and running these back to back to back 20 mile training runs I knew would pay off in the later hours of this race. It was not just the physical demand of the second half, it was also the mental demand. With the runners and the spectators uh, gone, and spread out in the darkness. It was hard to stay mentally focused. This is the part of the race where you want to have your best music, your best podcast, or even a pacer if you're lucky. For me, I get to pick up mine at the Pineapple Aid Station, but that's still another 10 miles before I can do that. I need to stay focused. I just need to keep moving forward. From this point on in the race, I started picking off runners one by one. It started to look like one of those epic zombie movies, but in this case, the zombies weren't running, they were the walking dead. With a look of dread and defeat on their faces, a look I was all too familiar with as it reminded me of my defeat back in 2021 where I ended up dropping out at the Geneseo aid station. I ran by them trying to cheer them on. I could tell many of them were hitting the wall and riding that infamous struggle bus out there in the darkness. Out here in the darkness, there's a sense of peace, but it also gets a little creepy. Strange sounds, unexpected noises, coyotes howling, owls hooting, random frogs jumping in the canal, and of course a forever constant sound of my feet hitting the ground one after another after another. Getting ready to come into the Pineapple Aid Station. How you doing, man? All right. All right. Thank you. Nice work, nice work. All right. Hey guys, how you doing? Ho oh, ho, what's up, buddy? Ready to roll? Ready to roll? How you doing, man? I'm uh, 
I made her. Uh, let's see. Uh, gnarly. Gnarly. We gnarly. Can do. You got some mashed potatoes. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Give me a cup of gnarly. Oh, yeah, we got cups Whip me up here. a batch of mashed potatoes here. I'm going to be sitting somewhere. I don't know where my You're chair is. Right over here by the fireplace. Yeah. Right. Any of those chairs? Uh, of course, she's by the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I just had some tailwind up in those, so I feel like. <sighs> All right, let's uh, let's check out the feet here and get them lubed up and ready to go. You want to get these yeah. uh, charged up here? What's the mile here? Seventy-four point six. Yeah, almost seventy-five. Okay, right so my gar. Okay, I thought I was losing my mind. Okay. Okay. okay good. Oh, what happened? Yeah, uh, uh, I thought it was seventy-three. I, Potatoes. For life, man, I thought it was Thank seventy-three so something. Much. So well. Yeah, no, there I heard you, you say that earlier, and I'm they like, well, I think it's 75. No. 74. They are going to be very hot. Okay, I'll let them cool for a minute. Um, I'm, yeah, this is getting a little difficult here. Ah, ah, getting stiff. Ah, ah, ah. Staying warm out there? Yeah, believe it or I, not. I overdressed, so we'll see. Yeah, you'll, uh, you'll be peeling that off yeah, here soon. I'll do it, no problem. I didn't know how windy or whatever it was, so I just wanted to be sure. I don't want to be too cold. I'd rather be hot than cold. Did you bring anything that you want me to bring out to the next aid station? Not really. Or I'm going to be? Okay. Because it's a half clothes. marathon from here. Yeah, I got some clothes and stuff maybe to bring until they finish. Go get those real quick while you're doing that. All right. Last photo. One last photo. All right. Hey, Austin. Yeah. yeah. Um, when we get to Geneseo, uh, is one of the white batteries charged? Oh, uh, let me see. Or just give me a, just make sure one's charged by Geneseo. This is the point in the race where I pick up my pacer, Anthony. He knew what my race plan was and would keep me at the right pace for my run-walk intervals. So all I had to do was just focus on his heels and keep up with him. This would also break the feeling of isolation from running several hours alone in the dark. But I still had 25 miles to go, nearly a full marathon. Okay. All right, let me. Let's finish up the Hennepin 100. <laughs> oh my God. There we go. There's the finish line. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful sight. Finish line, the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Sub 24, baby. We're gonna get her done.
way too far. Oh my god. We're sub 23. Sub 23. <laughs> adventure. <laughs> 